I don't know why I was afraid these were gonna fall off not being lock-on grips. These are, yep, making real progress now. <laughs> oh, you know, while I was out testing these grips, that probably at least my hundredth set since the beginning of last year, I had an epiphany. You see, starting last year, for some reason, my hands began to go incredibly numb while I was riding, both uphill and down, especially when I was going downhill, right? Any length of time, I noticed I was almost completely unable to feel my hand, that brake lever, it was almost a dangerous situation at times. You know, I have tried so many different options to try and fix the situation. Some of them have been okay, and others have been a complete disappointment. And today, I wanted to share not only the epiphany I had while out testing this latest set, but also the good, the bad, and the ugly about all the different grips I've tried, and which ones I'm actually going to keep on the bike this season. So, my name is Grant, welcome. This is El Rue Bike, let's get into this. Nope, nope, still not budget. Without further ado, let me get into the epiphany I had the other day while I was out testing. Um, actually, this set of grips here, the, we'll talk about them later, but the ESI Chunky versus Razors, not Razors, Racers Edge Grips, skinny, less skinny sort of a thing. It dawned on me, like I mentioned earlier, I have been having the hardest time since last year with my hands. I had tried to remedy that. I thought I needed more cushion, you know, ranging from these big fat boys here to your fancy ergo grips to <laughs> so many others, right? Um, and, you know, it didn't dawn on me until I went back to a very thin profile grip what I was doing wrong. I was mismatching myself and my body anatomy with the equipment I was trying to use because I hadn't really thought it through all the way. I didn't understand the implications and what that handlebar and the grips were actually meant to be. You know, your handlebars really, in my opinion, aren't meant to be a like a monkey hold on as tight as you can while you throw yourself down the hill sort of a situation. Instead of a vice grip, it's meant to be more of a tool of a finesse, right? It's meant to be a point of leverage. And to be honest, it never dawned on me how important it was for your grips, the size and how they perform and move in your hand to be able to be moved, right? For me, the larger diameter grips, the only thing I could do, and in fact, just holding these now, I now clearly see what my problem was. They're too big for me. And the only thing I can possibly do with these things is to squeeze as hard as I can and hold on for dear life. There is no ability to finesse these for me and my hand size. I have to go down to almost this bare minimalistic sort of barely there grip in order for my smallish, medium sizeish, whatever hands to be able to have that manipulation that I need to. And talk about night and day difference, right? And I think it became so clear because I had a set of thick ones on at the same time that I had a thin one on. And I could see the difference so clearly. I was looping up this particular little bit of technical trail, just practicing my level ups. And I noticed myself, because I kept repeating it over and over and over again, there was a step up and a step up that I had to clear. And the only times I was able to clear it, it was because I was not only using my body and leveraging from my hips, but I was also leveraging with the handlebars to help keep that momentum forward. And that was only possible because my hands were not in a death grip situation because I had a smaller grip on that allowed for me to pivot and roll that bar in place. It was amazing. Just like literally like a lightning bolt hit me out of the blue and just, I saw exactly what I was doing wrong. Like the difference is night and day. Boom, game changer for me. Holy crap. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so I just went to the garage and stole a bunch of stuff to try and help illustrate what I'm talking about here as far as finding a grip size diameter that's appropriate to your hand size. Okay, so for this example, got my big fat chunkies here and I've got my slimmer profile slimmies, whatever. So for example, pretend like this is the fat chunky boy grip, right? 
if your hand is barely able to like hold on to it and your only option to keep control of that handlebar is to death grip it, you're not gonna have the ability and movement in your wrist to be able to finesse and lever that thing, right? Let's say for the example, this is the skinny guy, a much slimmer diameter. Your ability to move and hold on to that with a looser grip and still maintain control of it is huge, right? I mean, to keep and to maneuver your handlebars, the leverage you get and the ability to move and manipulate your hand and the handlebars is like a million times greater if the grip size is just more appropriate to your hands, right? All right, next, let's do a quick measurement. All right. <laughs> All right, next, let's talk about the right diameter. And obviously I've got myself here, so I'm gonna use me as the example. Now, I just measured my hand. This is not super duper accurate, but I'm gonna lay it down with my handy thing here. I am seeing approximately mm, six and three quarters to seven, depending on where you stop from the top to the bottom. So what does that mean for these guys? Well, let's compare that A with the diameter here of this. I've got a handy tool that promises to be extremely accurate. Depending on how these things, you know what, to heck with this. Let's get the bike of truth over here. Let's measure them on the bike. Now, as I was explaining earlier, this is the hand where I noticed the absolute difference, right? You've got the chunky over here and you've got the slim profile over here, but what does that actually mean in diameter? 30.82 millimeters compared to 32.38 millimeters. So not a huge difference, but boy, I can tell you it made a massive difference on control. And just feeling these two, it is a night and day difference. I benefit from being, you know, small, smaller hand, small, whatever. <laughs> no one likes to admit they got small hands. <laughs> we'll call them smaller so I don't feel like a jerk, right? <laughs> Me and my tiny hands. All right, moving on. I benefit much greater and how I ride from a smaller diameter plus a thinner profile, less cush sort of a grip. It just feels better in my hands than this more, and to be honest, it's more comfortable. It's more shock absorbing, but I can't afford with the size of my hand, this grip in combo with the, the cush. That's just the way it goes. Now, if we come over and look at some of these other ones, I did a review on these previously, the Dreadlock, ODI Dreadlock, Tinker Juarez. They are phenomenally comfortable. I mean, you hold on to these things and they're wonderful. They're just too big for my hands. And I realize that now. Ergon, uh, when I had my bike professionally set up, you know, fitted and all that stuff, I complained to the guy. Hey, my hands are going numb. Of course, they adjusted the stack height here. They did all of this, this, and that to make it like less leany on the handlebars, that sort of a thing. And they also said, why don't you try these Ergon grips? And hey, they're blue, just like your bike. Winner, right? No, worst grips I've ever tried. So if you like them, sorry. They just didn't work for me. That's like 42 millimeters. <sighs> One thing I would like to call out, these all are lock-on grips, right? Meaning you screw in this metal collar, there's a plastic PVC liner. These are very different. Um, in fact, I'm brand new to these ESI grips. They're priced right. These are like half the cost of these guys. And I thought, you know, they're not lock-on grips. Uh, well, these things are gonna fly off. No. The, as long as you, you start with a clean handlebar and you pour tons of alcohol on it like they recommend and you push it in, these aren't going anywhere. I don't know if you saw, I wasn't faking it. These things are stuck and I'm gonna have to cut this off to put the twinner on this side. Uh, Lock-in is not a requirement. Last question, which ones am I leaving on the bike for this season? It's these guys. Takeaways, find the appropriate 
grip size for your hands. Two, learn to lever this thing and use this as a tool. Don't monkey grip and death grip this thing to death. Not good, use it as a tool, use it as a point of manipulation to move your bike and hop over things and that sort of thing. Keep it loose in your hand. There's no need for, you're not trying to kill it. It didn't steal your lunch money, leave it alone. Anyway, find the right grip size. Don't death grip, enjoy. <laughs> Mm. And if you want to see more, I've got a whole video on all the different stuff I'm upgrading on this bike, my new bike, the Pivot Trail 429, up above. Next video, we're talking about storage. Do you want to, do you want to see a sneak peek of what we're talking about? I'm so excited. Hold on. I don't know if you could see it. Do you see that guy hanging off the bottom there? <gasps> That's what we're talking about next time. Storage solutions for your bike. Ah! Oh! It's exciting. Grant, El Rubai, stay tuned. See you next time. Bye.